Today is the second day of our offline national level development program on sports training, coaching, and recent changes in rules and regulations in Kabaddi, basketball, judo, and volleyball. I welcome all the members of the committee and the delegates for this program. Respected dignitaries of the program, Mr. Piyush Jain, Secretary of Physical Education, Foundation of India, Mr. Srikant, Secretary of Physical Education Foundation of India, Karnataka Chapter, Mr. Ravi Kumar, Organizing Secretary, Maleshwaram, sorry, Maharani Cluster University, Dr. Manjunath, Moderator of today's event, Resource Person, Shri M.S. Balaji Prabhu, former international volleyballer and international referee. Nishya Joseph, international volleyball player and dear delegates. Before we begin our program, I request all the delegates to mute themselves and any query to put in the chat box, which shall be discussed after the session. Thank you. To begin with, I request moderator, Dr. Mantina, to start the event. Thank you. Yes, okay, good evening for everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dear professional colleagues, one players, delegates, I take this opportunity to congratulate a modern is a cluster university for having a physical sorry did a modern is a cluster university department of physical education a pfa a karnataka chapter for having jointly organized the national faculty development program on this training and coaching and recent changes in the prominent sports in india so on this uh, occasion i would like to introduce here there are uh, two personalities. One is very smart in volleyball in Karnataka, Mr. Balaji Prabhu MS, and uh, one more uh, personality from Mysore, Nisha Joseph. I welcome you, sir. Mr. Balaji Prabhu uh, uh, presently is a, a international uh, referee and also a former international volleyball player at present only the referee in india as an international player and international referee we never seen in karnataka and he got uh, many medals in uh, nationals and a national league as a player as well as a, a coach and he worked various uh, capacities in uh, volleyball so he is uh, one of the promoter of volleyball in karnataka and one of the uh, lover of volleyball in, in karnataka so in this juncture, so I would like to uh, give a platform to uh, Mr. Balaji Prabhu to give a, um, uh, rules and regulations, the gathering in uh, entire international rules of regulations in volleyball, sir. And one more, the chief guest of honor today, Nisha Joseph, an international volleyball player. She is from Mysore. So, she has played the various uh, international uh, events at uh, Philippines, Vietnam, Thailand, etc. Along with his uh, sports career, the madam is also uh, serving uh, Indian railways. So, this shows her positions and confident the sportsman spirit and working in uh, various uh, categories in the different uh, fields. It is a, a pleasure to have you with us, madam. I welcome you, Anisha Joseph, madam, also. So, in this occasion, I am going to uh, give an opportunity. I am sure we will all uh, benefit from his knowledge, sharing, and I welcome you again, sir, Mr. Balaji Prabhu, sir. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Manjunath, uh, for uh, introducing a wonderful introduction. Uh, but before I start, I think uh, Nisha Joseph is uh, she's 
uh, about to leave. She wants to leave at six thirty. Before I start my rules, so let you, if you people can uh, uh, just uh, have interaction with uh, Nisha Joseph, and then we can continue. Is it okay? Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, please. Madam Nisha Joseph, good evening, madam. Hello. Can you audible, Nisha, madam? Nisha Joseph. She has to unmute. Madam Nisha. Madam Nisha Joseph. Madam Nisha. Appropriate. Uh, so, good evening to all of you, uh, to all the delegates, experts, the organizers, the coaches, the players, and the officials, uh, those who are on the online. Um, so, first of all, I would like to thank Ramhari Cluster University for giving me an opportunity to be a part of uh, uh, to be a part of this uh, sports promoting event, and not only to share the latest <coughs> changes in volleyball. Also, in promotion of sports. Also, like to thank uh, Dr. M. S. Reddy, the Special Officer for Maharani Cluster University, Dr. Ravi Kumar, and uh, uh, Sri Kant, all the other delegates, and to Dr. Manjunath um, for giving me an opportunity. And uh, I would fail if I don't like if I if I fail to thank my teacher, my late Mr. Margalingam sir. Also to my all my seniors like Chandukumar Sir, our Karnataka Volleyball Association Chairman, uh, Mr. Sri Benny, and Dr. P. K. Jagannath, and also to our Karnataka Volleyball Association and Volleyball Federation of India for guiding me uh, throughout. So first, uh, before starting this, uh, let me uh, say why uh, I'll be covering only the latest changes. What has happened? Uh, in the latest uh, changes in volleyball, and uh, because since the time constraint is very less, so I cannot continue. I cannot cover up almost all the 28 rules. So I'll be only the latest changes and modification. What has happened? Only I'll be that too, which is very very important uh, for the coaches or uh, as well as for the players. Of course, officials definitely the referees has to learn all these things. But for coaches and players, where they can go for review system or the challenge system, which has been introduced in 2013, so that they can, um, uh, how can they ask and everything, and to know the rules better, so that they can implement in the, on the ground, so there won't be any untoward incident if they are not knowing the rules. Especially, I'm not talking about the internal standards. I'm talking about our um, our Indian uh, uh, standards. I'm talking about. Of course, in our India is also very good in this thing. All the players are more disciplined, but still, uh, one or two incidents do happen. So that uh, let them uh, learn all these things. That's the intention of, uh, and uh, all the players and coaches should be updated about the latest rules. This is what I wanted to cover up. So it's the being the time constraint. So I think uh, Nisha has already joined. Uh, uh, Mr. Manjana, can you please? Hello. Then I'll start the class. Don't mind. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Madam, Namaste. Namaste, sir. And I'm here. Sumba, Dante Vadagulu, Namige, Navo Itra, Packet Development Program Malay, Nioba, Antarashi, Atagar Tiagi, Karnataka, the Chapu Murstenta, Tenta, Vega, the Atagar Tenta, Oberli, Nio Bru. So Aneka, Atagar, the Nodra Hadru Saha, Nio Mysur Kade, Mysur Sports Astale, Abutuma Atagar Tega, Aneka, Yeser and Namadi. Central Railways, Bendela Bagi, New Kelsa Martaidra, Hagagi, New E. Kridege, Boradeke, Nim Yingi Spurti Kot, Sikto, Yar Spurti Kotro, Isn't the Nimge, Yen Anstaide, is E. Kridele, Yatara and the Batkan Katkodida and Tatama, Anisike, Namagin with Tilsboda. As I should ail to me. Ladakuminche, good evening on Enda Nano Volleyball Gay Joinagi, two thousand six, a Joinagi do. Andre Nando first to Nange encourage Madidu volleyball gave her bekunta, Amandu, Tamaidara Laudu, Audusaha volleyball player Agidru Matin and do I to Saha to Baitu, 
ನಾನು ಇಷ್ಟ ಐಟಿ ಇರೋದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಅವ್ರಿಗೂ ಖುಷಿ ಇತ್ತು ನಂತರನೇ ಒಂದು ಪ್ಲೇಯರ್ ಆಗ್ಬೇಕು ಒಬ್ಳು ಪ್ಲೇಯರ್ ಆಗ್ತಾಳೆ ಅಂತ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಅಪ್ಪ ಅಮ್ಮನ್ಗೂ ಅವ್ರು ಹೇಳಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೂ ಖುಷಿ ಆಯ್ತು ಅಪ್ಪ ಅಮ್ಮನು ಸಹ ಎನ್ಕರೇಜ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಆಮೇಲೆ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಹಾಸ್ಟೆಲ್ಗೆ ಜಾಯ್ನ್ ಆದೆ ಅವಾಗ ವಾಲಿಬಾಲ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಏನು ಅಂತ ನಂಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿರ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಎಲ್ಲ ಅದ್ಲಿಗೆ ಬಂದ ಮೇಲೆ ಕಲ್ತಿದ್ದು ಆಮೇಲೆ ಮುಂಚೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಸೆಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ತಗೊಂಡು ಆಮೇಲೆ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಹಾಸ್ಟೆಲ್ಗೆ ಹೋದ್ವಿ ಅವಾಗ ಮನೆಯೆಲ್ಲ ಬಿಟ್ಟಿರ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಪ್ಪ ಅಮ್ಮಗೂ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು ನಮಗೂ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು ಆಮೇಲೆ ಕೋಚ್ ತುಂಬಾ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಗೈಡ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಮುಂಚೆ ನನಗೆ ಅನಿಲ್ ಒಕ್ರೆ ಅಂತ ಇದ್ರು ಆ ಸರ್ ತುಂಬಾನೇ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ನನಗೆ ಕೋಚಿಂಗ್ ಕೊಟ್ರು ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ತುಂಬಾ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಬಂತು ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ನಾನು ಇಷ್ಟು ಒಂದು ದೊಡ್ಡ ಪ್ಲೇಯರ್ ಆಗಿ ಇವತ್ತಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಅಂತ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಮೇನ್ ಅವರೇ ನನಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಎನ್ಕರೇಜ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅವರೇ ನನಗೆ ಕಾರಣ ಅದಾದ್ಮೇಲೆ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸಿಕ್ತು ಕ್ಯಾಂಪ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಇವಾಗ ಒಳ್ಳೆ ರೈಲ್ವೆ ಜಾಬ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಸಿಕ್ಕಿದೆ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಮೈಸೂರು ಹಾಸ್ಟೆಲ್ಗೆ ಬಂದೆ ಏಟ್ ಟು ಟೆಂತ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರಲ್ಲಿ ಓದಿದ್ದು ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಹಾಸ್ಟೆಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪಿ ಯು ಸಿ ಇಂದ ಡಿಗ್ರಿವರೆಗೂ ಮೈಸೂರಲ್ಲಿ ಓದಿದ್ದು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅಶೋಕ್ ಸರ್ ಕೋಚ್ ಆಗಿದ್ರು ನನಗೆ ಅವರು ಸಹ ತುಂಬಾ ಎನ್ಕರೇಜ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಮತ್ತೆ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಡಯಟ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಮೇನು ನಾವು ಚೆನ್ನಾಗೂ ತಿನ್ಬೇಕು ಒಳ್ಳೆ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ತಗೋಬೇಕು ಗೇಮ್ ಕಡೆ ಕಾನ್ಸಂಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಡಿಸಿಪ್ಲಿನ್ ಇಂದ ಇರಬೇಕು ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಯರ್ಸ್ಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ನಮ್ದು ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಆ ಕಡೆ ಕಡೆ ಡೈವರ್ಟ್ ಆದ್ರೂ ಸಹ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಅಚೀವ್ ಮಾಡೋದೆಲ್ಲ ತುಂಬಾ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ In the same time, you have a participation in various uh, sports like volleyball and in the practices at the time, which is the uh, very satisfaction and enjoyment whether you are going to give Hello. more studies. Hello? Hello? Can you... Uh, Hello. Hello. While you study, while you are studying, because the COVID-19 Hello. paramedic, so because we are going to the conduct of this program, the lot, uh, the so many players, they cannot involve in the sports activities they are not seeing in the grounds now it is so that you are the for us motivator so you are the chief guest of in this uh, junction so uh, i'm asking the question is while you are studying you are given more importance for the studies as well as you are given more importance of the sports so how you feel where you are getting more satisfaction are you are you understand nisha joseph madam hello nisha joseph yeah okay fine so first let us understand why these uh, rules are modified or being changed so it is being done so because the to make the game more attractive so that more rallies do happen and uh, the spectators especially the spectators will enjoy more 
and more people may come and join volleyball or any other sports. That's the intention. And there should be a fair play. That is the reason they keep changing. Uh, so more spectacular action should happen on the ground. That is the reason. So is it OK with, uh, uh, I'm talking only in English, or do you want me to talk in uh, any other this thing, Hindi or Canada, anything? Is it OK, Manjana? Sir, anything will uh, go, sir. OK, fine. What will be you. understandable by the people? Yeah, thank you very much, madam. So now let me start uh, this um, the latest changes. What has happened? I'll be sharing the uh, screen now. Hello. One second, huh? there is some issue. Okay, one second. So I have to go for the entire screen, right? Hello? Anybody? Let's proceed, sir. Okay, I have gone there. Uh, then I have to go to this and then share. Yeah, I've done that now. Okay, done. Okay, now is it visible now? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, before I start, okay, namaste to all of you and welcome to all of you. So we are here today to know and learn about the latest changes in volleyball rules. So there is a slogan for volleyball. That is, get involved and keep the ball flying. That is a volleyball slogan. So first, we'll be starting with a small question to you people. So I'll just give you five seconds to answer this. I know many people of you know all these things, but still I'll be asking a small question. How many types of volleyball are there? In volleyball this is what the question is. I'm giving you five seconds. There yes. are two, sir. Not you. I'm asking the uh, all our people there who are watching live. OK, OK. okay. Yes. And the chat box, they can do the chatting. Uh, let them give the answer. I give five seconds. No. Is it okay? Yeah, fine. Yeah. Actually, many people have said that it is uh, two. That is perfectly 100% correct. So they know the volleyball. Fantastic. That's a very good sign. So there are two types, that is a regular volleyball and then a beach volleyball. These are the two types of volleyball we play. Now, coming to the rules, which has been changed, a little bit of modification has been done. So here, I'll be sharing a lot of videos. Before sharing all these videos, this is the courtesy from FIVB. This, all these videos have been downloaded by an FIB website, through FIB website. So the courtesy because there is a restrictions for this. So I have done it through FIB website. So here you can see the coaches restriction lines has been removed now. As per the latest rules, this has been removed. So no more coaches restriction line. The can the coach can go up to the sideline here, and then but please make sure, especially I'm uh, cautioning the referees, make sure that at least a small distance is maintained. So that uh, usually sometimes for the coaches will get so much involved in the game, they may start uh, even uh, 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 handling the players too. So because we have seen uh, many coaches, especially our late uh, the mother Yoda sir was so much excited and, and uh, always so much in, uh, involved in the game. So usually I've seen that we had experienced that when we were playing days. So this the coaches decision line that was they had put earlier. Now this has been removed. So the coaches can move around freely. That is the reason. So I'll be sharing this video. You can just see this. This is now uh, rule number 5.2.3.4. This has been changed now. So going for the next rule. Now coaches, what they can, what is the uh, gadgets they can use? So usually coaches can use this, uh, like their headphone, what they are using as of now. So that they'll be getting instructions from the experts. Usually the team consists of not only the players, the officials, 
and the coaches, even uh, the team consists of experts who they'll be giving the instructions to the coaches. So what to do and when to do and a uh, lot of things because uh, uh, just let me share a small example because why this thing has come. So I wanted to share a small uh, uh, incident which happened to our Indian volleyball. So I think, uh, I don't know the exact year because our uh, Dr. M. H. Kumar Asar yesterday, he gave the thing coach. He was the coach and Dr. Shamsundar Sar was the main coach and uh, Kumar was the assistant coach. So actually there was a qualifying tournament which our uh, India had participated and uh, we had bet uh, Australia as well as other teams and uh, we were playing against the uh, Bahrain and uh, the third set we were leading 24-21. So what happened, even now the score is saying the same, 24-21. So two sets we had won and the third set we were leading 24-21. So everybody thought, okay, now we are qualified already. So the player looked, took a little bit casual there. So what happened? The team, Bahrain team, slowly started catching up. And even though the coach was shouting, oh, you should not chumat chodna, mat chodna, directly lay low, thin set me, and okay. But what happened? The players, little bit, they relaxed. So what happened? That set was won by Bahrain. And then, uh, of course, India won by 3 1. That is what happened. But uh, when the final table came, so there was a tie between India and Australia. So because both the team had uh, won the same uh, as well as loss also. So as you know, that table later on, I'll be sharing that. So the ratio, it actually went in favor of Australia. That is 0 0.01 point. Australia actually qualified. So what happened, that applications, what happened to Indian volleyball? Actually, at that one small mistake, India didn't qualify. Of course, we were beating Australia very easily, but... At that juncture, Australia qualified. Now, Australia is in within 15 ranks in the world. We have gone back. That great opportunity was lost. So, that's why the team actually takes the experts, the experts with the team, along with the team. So, they'll be giving the caution because coaches will be involved in the game and they'll be concentrating more on that. So, the experts will be giving a caution. So, this is what it is. So, then... The coaches can, as per the instructions by the expert, they can take a call on this. That's the reason all these gadgets are allowed now. So I'll be sharing this video. You can see the coach actually talking to the experts who will be outside the control area, who will be sitting outside the control area and be passing on the instructions to the coach. You can watch this. The coach is actually reasoning to the expert's opinion. Okay. Now, because I don't want to go into detail about rule number one, two, three, and other things, because you people already know, because it takes a lot of time, the rule number one takes a lot of time for me to explain the measurement, how to measure the ground, what is the y-axis of the, what divides the court, all these things, so many things. So I'll be starting directly with the, the team. So usually the team with the Asian Championship or this level senior championship, the team consists of how many players and how many officials. And the coaches, this is what it is. Usually, in this type of uh, this thing, there are uh, 12 players, one coach, two assistant coaches, one team therapist, and one medical doctor. Total, it is like six, 17 members in this team. So, team manager and the journalist usually will be sitting outside the control area. And for uh, uh, senior world championship, Olympics, other players, there are 14 players. Not 12, there will be 14 players. Where 14 players for this, especially when the, the team consists of 14 players, two libros is a compulsory league. It's a must. The team should have minimum two libros. It's a compulsory. So here it will be 19. But in, in these photographs, you can see many more. It is like 21. So they are actually the manager on the doctor, team doctor. They'll be sitting outside the control area. So when necessity comes, they can intervene because of before this accreditation happens. So they can intervene when the, any injury happens, the team, uh, medical doctor can come in. That is the intention of this. Now you can understand that before this Asian Championship, other teams, they will be a consisting players of 12 players, two coaches, and then uh, one head coach, two assistant coaches, one therapist, one medical doctor. For uh, senior uh, world championship, World leagues, other places, they have 14 players, one head coach, two assistant coaches, one therapist, and one doctor. So now 
I'll be coming to the team uniforms. This is also very, very important because now uh, this has been changed. You can see here, I have, uh, in the left side, you can see this team is very number 12, and here it is number 23. Here, actually, for, as, I told, as I told, for the Asian Championship, other things, when the team consists of 12 players, they can go up to 1 to 20, from 1 to 20. For FIB, World and Official Competitions uh, for Seniors, where especially for the World Leagues, they have more players, more than 14, they, because you can keep changing uh, the players. So these, these uh, conditions, they can extend the number, about 20. That is the intention of giving this. That rules has been already changed now. Only for this, for the official uh, senior world championship, official competition, world level and the senior Olympics. Like that. They can go beyond 20. So next, I'll be coming to the team leaders. Very, very important roles because the coach and the team leaders should know. So who is, who can, and uh, who are the responsible uh, persons for the team's uh, conduct of the team and discipline of the team members. So these two, especially uh, the coach, here, the coach and the team captain. You can see the captain uh, below the number, the strip is very important. So that indicates the captain. So these two, the coach and the team captain, or the game captain, are the responsible for the conduct and discipline of their team members. So I'll be coming next to the captain. Here also, the captain plays a major role. So what all he can do and what he can do and what he cannot do. So here, the coach, the captain, actually is not only I mean, taking care of the discipline of the uh, team, as well as he has got a lot of other responsibilities. Like, suppose um, uh, earlier the captain was, uh, was having the rights to ask for substitution or timeouts. Now that has been removed. Only the coach has got the rights to ask for timeout timeout or substitution. So this has been taken out from the uh, captain's responsibility. As per the prior to the match, the team captain always, as you all know, that he is going to sign the score sheet and uh, representing his team in the toss. So they are only the game captain. Just remember this, only a game captain, not the team captain. Whoever is inside, they suppose the team captain, after the toss, he may be not in the uh, playing six. So the, they'll be, will, uh, the referee will be asking who is the game captain. And then the, that particular player will be raising the hand when the first referee asks to acknowledge, yes, he is the game captain. So only the game captain is authorized to speak to the referees or to, the ex, to request the explanation. The coach is not authorized. This is very, very important. Please, the coaches, uh, please uh, uh, make note that only the game captain is authorized to speak to the referees. The two, when the rally is over, when the rally is completed, only then he can and he is authorized to go to the referee and request for the explanation of the, um, uh, for the, uh, the judgment, what he has given, to have to explain the, uh, the rule. So, here, what is happening? So, and then, uh, interpretation of the rules, that's what I said. Like, they, he can, uh, he has got authorized to us the interpretation of rules. When the ball is especially out of play or when the rally is uh, already completed. And then there is a very, very important one more because you, next video I'll be uh, sharing that. See, the game captain has got the rights to ask who is the next server. You might have seen the player will be asking like this. This is the sign for that. This is a signal. So he'll be asking um, uh, who is the next server? Because once what happens usually when there will be long rallies, lot of rallies, and then um, uh, the match will be going neck to neck, like scores, because the, high, the tougher competition, the players will be, of course, they'll be knowing, but still they will keep it of confusion. So the game captain immediately asks the, whichever, wherever, whether, suppose he's near the second referee or near the first referee, he can ask the referee what is the rotation I mean who is the next server i'll be sharing that video please go through the, see that see, this is the game captain he is actually asking see is the rotation so now immediately if, if, uh, this actually immediately the second referee should oblige and the scorer actually will say who is the next server only. 
he'll never say the positions he'll never set the position he'll say number 9 to sir or number 3 to sir or whatever the, who is exact because the authentic document is a score sheet so this is what it is so here the game captain after the match one second sorry so after the match uh, there is a very very important thing he has to sign the score sheet right so here there is a very very important uh, questions to you people when he has to sign the score sheet this is the question when he has to sign the score sheet and why so here i'll be telling who all should sign first and then when the coach i mean the captain has to sign now i'll explain why so the first will be the assistant scorer then the scorer then the captain comes in why because here what happens sometimes we are seen in our of course in international matches of course they do the follow the same system but sometimes in in our uh, uh, country we keep it of we are not following little bit of system like that so what we say immediately after the match we'll call the captain to sign the captain actually uh, should not sign why because suppose uh, in a match uh, there is one decision given by the referee which is not uh, actually of course there is a challenge system but still uh, the team is not agreeing the, the, the decision was given uh, what was given was not uh, to their this thing so uh, the captain game captain will raise his hand and go to the first referee and he will be asking uh, to interpret the rules why so the after he still is not satisfied he will say that i'll be will be playing under protest so that protest has to be recorded on the score sheet because authentic documentation is the score sheet so the scorer will make note of that and what is the score and what set and the time everything so after the match completion of the match the first referee comes and records on the remarks column then only that is an official authenticated protest suppose before uh, uh, entering on the remarks writing on the uh, remarks column the captain signs the score sheet then there is no question of ask there is no protest can be upheld because already you are agreed and signed it so very very important for a game a captain or the team captain to note that if there is any protest so the protest has to be recorded on the remarks column and then only he has to sign the score sheet then it will be authentic so this is the reason and there is an order uh, for the um, signing of the score sheet i think you people understood this so now i will be going for the uh, next uh, rule that is a rally and computer rally uh, what is a rally and computer rally a rally is the sequence of playing actions Uh, from the moment of the service hit by the surveyor until the ball is out of play so that includes award of a point award of a point or now this is very important even a penalty see earlier a penalty was not considered as a completed rally so now this has been changed it is known as even the penalty or when the after service authorization after completion of 8 seconds even that is also computer rally so an award of a point uh, award of a penalty or loss of service for service seat made after even the time limits of 8 seconds so this is considered as a computer rally now why why this has been changed it has been changed because If for example i'll give you when the libro thing comes actually i wanted to explain that but uh, since this has come come again i'll be sharing this so now for example a libro has replaced a player and uh, he is inside and he is in zone number 6 uh, imagine he is in zone number 6 okay now what has happened after one complete rally he comes to zone number 5 and then he is coming to zone 5 and rally is not completed now rally is not even happened so what is happening now the opponent team will be because there was some dispute with the uh, the decision so the opponent one player actually misbehaves or misbehaves with the or uh, with the referee so there will be a penalty for that he'll be penalized by showing a red card so automatically a point comes to this team so now there is no rally but the libro has to move to zone 4 correct when he is going without a rally is now from five zone is going to zone 
So now there is no computer rally. So what rule, earlier rules for selling after a computer rally only the uh, liberal can be replaced or a substitution can happen. But here it is a force majeure. It's a force majeure. Okay, it is not the fault of the team. It is actually a penalty to the opponent team or the server after service authorization he couldn't uh, complete the service within eight seconds. So that is now considered as a computer rally. I think people have understood this. So now it can be replaced. The Libro can replace the other uh, back zone player. And go on. Uh, the replaced player can, can come inside to zone 4. This is what it is. So now I think people understood uh, the computer rally. Because this is very, very important. That this is known as a force majority where uh, there is a penalty or the, uh, the opponent team is not able to complete the service action within 8 seconds. Now, this is the rule number seven. This is official warm-up session. So this is for especially for the coaches. So this is official warm-up sessions. So what they can, can do and what they cannot do. So I'll be sharing a lot of videos. So why I'll be sharing videos is there is a reason for that. Because so the, the videos, what you see, it remains in our system, in our brain. The visualization, what we see, it remains in our brain for longer duration. And because if I say, like if what I'm telling you officially now, so only if I say you will, at that moment you will take it in and it will forget. So if I show the through videos, what happens that visualization comes like, apne pehle both purana films deke hoga, das sal ka pehle. So, hindi film noder bodo. But you will be remembering that. Who is the hero? Who is the heroine? For that particular song or the punch dialogues. Jo acha dialogue ho kya jav me na, aisa bodo. Dialogues with a punch dialogues and what dress he was wearing. So how do you remember all this? This is through because of visualization. So that's why I I, I keep sharing a lot of videos on this. So now I'll be sharing a video, so you can see what happens. See here actually, here I'm showing you this my um, cursor here. Here what is happening is. See, this is actually a world league. In world league, uh, between the second and third set, there is a, a 10 minutes interval. Usually, we have officially three minutes. But in um, world league, they have 10 minutes break, second and third set. So you can see a lot of entertainment is happening. So just to uh, bring for the sponsorship or even for the entertainment sake and for the spectators of you, they are doing all this. Uh, so here, there is a certain things where when these intervals are there, where the players can do their official or where they can do with the warm-ups with the ball or without ball. So here what is happening is you can see this uh, assistant coach, just watch the video. What he does is between this set, just see what he is doing. He's actually, you can see, he's actually entering the play zone yeah. as, as well inside the court. Actually, they have to do outside the freeze. This area zone only has to do. See, now he is going and with the ball. This is not allowed. Please, coaches, please make note. This is not allowed. This is not at all allowed. Actually, uh, assistant coach or the trainer, he is going and uh, with the ball, he is training the libero, not libero, uh, okay, other players. He is not supposed to do that. So, this actually the a referee immediately, or the coach actually, he has to uh, tell the give the instructions before this, or even the referee can intervene and he can instruct the coach or assistant coach in a polite way, not in a very rude or anything. See, all this is only for the promotion the sports. I'm telling nobody is above the game. So there is for each and everything there is a gestures. Uh, for especially, I'm talking about the referees. For each and every see, there is a polite way of telling the coaches. Because a lot of tension matches will be having, there will be in tension. Just go and tell the please, coach, tell your assistant coach to please. He's not supposed to do the warm up during the interval, set interval. Please tell him to be on the bench. So definitely they'll oblige. Is it so? Correct? So that's how it should be done. Otherwise, if you are also angry and then a lot of tension starts and then arguments will happen. So this is what we have to avoid, especially because there should be a fair play as well as the 
you should not set any bad example for the uh, spectators. So now here one more video, you can see during the official warm up, what can be done, what cannot be done. See, here you can see this coach, an assistant coach, along with the ball rally in the opponent's place. Can you see here? Actually, this side, there's official warm-up is happening. And this coach is standing here. And then, watch the video. See, he's tapping the ball from here. You can see that. So from there, he's going. This is not allowed again. This, actually, this action is not allowed. Actually, there should be within their side. Within their side. And I'll show you the next video where they can stand and where they cannot. This is actually not allowed. Please, coaches, you have to take note of this. You are not supposed to do this in the opponent uh, uh, playing area. So now this is the, exactly this is allowed. The rules, what I am telling you, is this is the 4.2.4 or 5.3.1, the corresponding rules. You can watch this video. This is allowed. See, whichever the white circle comes, actually it is allowed. You can see why he is standing near the post. One second. So why he is uh, standing there near the post? That's the question, right? The coaches usually, the assistant coaches and the head coach will be standing near the post. What for? So they'll be standing so that their players should not get injured. And sometimes, you know, when the uh, enthusiasm, their players will be more eager to play. So they may be, uh, sometimes they may uh, uh, out of balance. They may go and hit the post. So... They to just to take a caution not to get the players injured before the match, so the coaches usually stands there. It's not a, um, uh, it's not compulsory, but of course they do this. You know, you can see this assistant coach uh, giving a ball to the head coach there. The coach is standing here. You can see him standing here. This is what it is. This is the official warm up. Now I'll be coming to the positions because a lot of uh, these things they were asking because in. Uh, 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 in the case book also some uh, this thing is going on uh, when the player whether the player should be uh, what uh, when the player should be uh, when the service is actioning what they should do so usually it says that they should be within their uh, within their court that's what it says the rules so be, when the service is happening they should be within their uh, positions one second eh? Manju, Dr. Manju, hello, Dr. Manjuna, hello. Okay. Sorry for the okay. inconvenience. Madam, again, I am going to disturb in you. <laughs> the thing is, when you are playing in the childhood, in volleyball, are you have any ambition I reach in this level? Yes, sir. Now, oh. first uh, volleyball starting at the... Uh, Andre just a national start beku and the start madidu. Andre Nan no start madaga and the gauge of fourteen years, sir. Avaga mini national and the fourteen years. Aganana time video, mini national start beku on a first and do in the day. Avaga the Narbe, Avaka Avaga Matti national scale of the Avaga, a photo of the Tumelo, Inu Arbeku, national start beku. International side, they don't have a gun and they meant to international side. They can and the first to the legacy are they content for day. Agagin and ten to Andre and an audible start made him more sure like international art day. Agatumane Kushetu Nangu Kushetu, but then I'm coaches at Nan Melatumba Opil Konidru, Art Talenta. Our Saha Tumane Kushupa True Amele Namdu internationally. Youth, youth India is there, youth Asian Championship, but the junior is there, senior is there. But then, uh, youth are there, junior are there, 
ಪ್ರತಿ ಸಿಂಗರ್ ಆಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ತುಂಬಾನೇ ಇರ್ತದೆ ಅದು ಪ್ರತಿ ಆಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಜನ ಪ್ಲೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ತಾರೆ ಅದು ತುಂಬಾ ಸಿಂಗರ್ ಪ್ಲೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ತಾರೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಅದು ಸಹ ನನ್ಗೆ ಚಾನ್ಸ್ ಆಯ್ತು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಾನು ಜಾಬಿಗೆ ಸೇರ್ ಆದ್ಮೇಲೆ ನನ್ಗೆ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆಡಕ್ಕೆ ಚಾನ್ಸ್ ಸಿಕ್ತು ಅದಾದ್ಮೇಲೆ ಒಂದು ಅವಾರ್ಡಿಗೆ ಸಹ ಅಪ್ಲೈ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಆ ಅವಾರ್ಡು ಸಹ ಸಿಕ್ತು ಅದೊಂದು ತುಂಬಾನೆ ಆಸೆ ಇತ್ತು ಏಕಲವ್ಯ ಅವಾರ್ಡ್ ಸಿಗ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ನನ್ಗೂ ಆಸೆ ಇತ್ತು ಮತ್ತೆ ಅಪ್ಪ ಅಮ್ಮಂಗೂ ಆಸೆ ಇತ್ತು ಕೋಚಸ್ ಸಹ ತುಂಬಾನೇ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರು ಅವಾರ್ಡ್ ಸಿಗೋಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಮತ್ತೆ ಅವಾರ್ಡ್ ಸಹ ಸಿಕ್ತು ಮತ್ತೆ ನಾನು ಎಲ್ಲಾರ್ಗೂ ಹೇಳೋದು ಏನ್ ಇಷ್ಟ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಏನ್ ಇಷ್ಟ ಪಡ್ತೀನಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಯಾವ್ದಾದ್ರು ಒಂದು ಗೇಮ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಆಡ್ಬೇಕು ಇಲ್ಲ ಒಂದು ಅಚೀವ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಒಂದು ಏನಾದ್ರು ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇದ್ರೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಮಾಡಿ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ವಾಲಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ವಾಲಿಬಾಲ್ ಅಂತಲ್ಲ ಯಾವ್ದೇ ಒಂದು ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆದ್ರೂ ಏನು ಯೂಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಏನು ಸಿಗಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಯಾವ್ದು ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಡಿ ನಿಮ್ಗೇನಾದ್ರು ಸಿಗುತ್ತೆ ಒಂದು ಗೇ ಗೋಲ್ ಅಂತ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಅದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಟ್ರೈ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಅದರಿಂದ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರತಿಫಲ ಸಿಕ್ಕೇ ಸಿಗುತ್ತೆ ಇವಾಗ ಕೊರೋನಾ ಬಂತು ಇವಾಗ ಎಲ್ಲ ಪ್ಲೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಮನೇಲೆ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಈಗ ಯಾರಿಗೂ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ಕಾಗಲ್ಲ ಟೀಮ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಆದ್ರೂ ನಮ್ಮೇಲೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಕಾನ್ಫಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಇರ್ಬೇಕು ನಾವ್ ಮುಂದೆ ಆಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅಂತ ಈ ಕೊರೋನಾ ಬಂತು ಈಗ ಆಡಕ್ ಆಗ್ತಿಲ್ಲ ಯಾವ್ದು ಮ್ಯಾಚಸ್ ಸಿಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಏನು ಇಲ್ಲ ನಾವು ಡೈಲಿ ಅಟ್ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಹೊರಗಡೆ ಆಗ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಮನೇಲೂ ಸಹ ಫಿಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಎಷ್ಟ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಷ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಈ ಕೊರೋನಾ ಲೈಫ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಏನ್ ಇರಲ್ಲ ಯಾವತ್ತಾದ್ರೂ ಹೋಗಿ ಹೋಗುತ್ತೆ ಇವಾಗ ಒಂದ್ ವರ್ಷ ಆದ್ಮೇಲೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಮ್ಯಾಚಸ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಆತರ ನಾವು ರೆಡಿ ಇರ್ಬೇಕು ಮೆಂಟಲಿ ಫಿಸಿಕಲಿ ನಮ್ಮೇಲೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಕಾನ್ಫಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಇರ್ಬೇಕು ನಾವ್ ಆಡ್ತೀವಿ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅಂತ ಆವಾಗ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಆ ಗೋಲ್ ನ ರೀಚ್ ಆಗಕ್ಕಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಅಹ್ ಯಾವ್ದೇ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಮಾಡೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಅದ್ರಿಂದ ಯೂಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಯಾವ್ದು ಅನ್ಕೊಳಂಗಿಲ್ಲ ನಾವ್ ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ಯಾವ ತರ ನಾವು ಇದನ್ನ ಓದ್ಬೇಕು ಇದನ್ನ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಈ ತರ ಆಗ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಒಬ್ರೊಬ್ರು ಕೆಲವ್ರು ಆಸೆ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅದೇ ತರ ಆಸೆ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಅದೇ ಗೋಲ್ ಇಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ನ ಸಹ ಮಾಡೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಅದ್ರಲ್ಲೂ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ಸಿಗುತ್ತೆ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಮಾಡೋರೆಲ್ಲ ಬರೀ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಎಲ್ಲ ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ಸಹ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಇದನ್ನು ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅವ್ರ ಎರಡು ಸಹ ಕಾನ್ಸಂಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ಹಾಗಂತ ಇವೆ ಎರಡು ಕಡೆನೂ ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಒಂದೇ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಏನಿಲ್ಲ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಸಹ ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಎಜುಕೇಶನ್ ಸಹ ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಆತರ ಎಲ್ಲ ಫೆಸಿಲಿಟಿನೂ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಮುಂಚೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸಿಗೆ ಅಷ್ಟೊಂದು ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಇರ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಇವಾಗಾದ್ರೆ ಎಷ್ಟೊಂದ್ ಕಡೆ ಹಾಸ್ಟೆಲ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಓಪನ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಇವಾಗ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡರ್ಡ್ ಇಂದಾನೆ ಸಹ ಹಾಸ್ಟೆಲ್ಗಳು ಓಪನ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಹಾಸ್ಟೆಲ್ಗೂ ಸಹ ಜಾಯ್ನ್ ಆಗಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕೋಚಸ್ ಸಹ ಟೀಮ್ ಜೊತೆ ವರ್ಕ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಕೋಚಸ್ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಹೇಳ್ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸಿಗೂ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ and being with us this day of our thank you very much join us and thank you so much sir. thank you for inviting me madam yeah welcome thank you Mr. piyush j secretary of the physical education foundation of india has joined us for this seventh day national level faculty development program on sports training coaching and research children in rules and regulations in kabaddi basketball judo and volleyball organized by maharani cluster university in association with physical education foundation of india karnataka chapter i take this opportunity to welcome mr piyush jain secretary physical education foundation of india we will
One second. Huh? So, uh, when the Nisha was talking, yeah. I was just going through some chats. Uh, people right. had asked, uh, sir, you have put only rule number six. Actually, yeah. to be very honest, actually by mistake, I had put rule number six. Actually, I was supposed to put so many slides in rule number six because of the constraint, time constraint, I removed so many things. So actually, it was supposed to be rule number seven. So this is what actually I was to tell, seven, actually 7.4. That is the position of the team. Rule number is called for you. You are uh, addressing. Uh, Hello. I can hear a lot of uh, background voices. Please. Yeah. Yeah. This is very disturbing. If it's possible to mute. So uh, yeah, yeah. let me continue. So the rule number seven point four, uh, the position says actually at the moment of ball is hit by the server, each team must be positioned within its own court. That's what it is. So I'll be sharing this video. You can see this uh, this player actually uh, out of bounds. The new is out of bounds. You can see this. I'm sharing that video. You can see this position here. See, this is an authorized service. This is not allowed. This is actually a position fault. So... Madam. This can be because usually the receiving side will be, will be visited by the the second referee. But since after authorization for service, the first referee is because it is happening towards the first referee, he can and he should visit for that for the fault. So that's what it says. I'm very sorry because in the chat box I seen one person, uh, Mr. Tara, actually is asked for um, uh, that is why you are showing only rule number six. I'm very sorry for that. So I'll be going for the next uh, this thing. This is a uh, modified. A team was given incorrect information about which player was to serve. Play continued. This incorrect information was noticed at a later point in the set. What happens now? This is the question. Actually, what has happened? Actually, usually sometimes what happens, it has happened with me also. Actually, after winning two sets, I told, okay, I wanted to put... Uh, uh, youngster in the first play in six. And then uh, the uh, game started. And then after some time, I'm seeing that uh, the player actually sitting on the bench. He has to be supposed to be in the uh, play in six. But he actually is sitting in the bench. So now this actually, first, uh, first and foremost, this actually be stacked by the second referee, which was actually, uh, he, the second referee didn't uh, see this. Uh, at least the scorer in the first serving uh, fault should have been caught. Even that was left. So, match is continuing. So, now, actually, earlier they used to cancel the whole point. When they, this thing. Now, the rule says, the team must revert to as close, close to their original lineup as possible. The scores revert to the point where the wrong information was given. So, when, the, when they find the fault, then only that particular point will be uh, cancelled and the play, the positions will be rectified and the game will continue. This is what it is. So, but at the same time, if there was any technical timeouts or timeout or such, this thing, that will be remained. That, that should be recorded, whatever it is, it will remain, even the sanctions, it will be remaining same throughout the, for that particular game. That's what is the modified rules. It is in case book 2.4 rule number. Uh, case book it is 2.4. It is modified. So the next I'll be coming to this simultaneous contact where I'll be uh, because I'll be uh, next video will be next uh, slides will be the video because here actually I couldn't put the photograph uh, uh, of this uh, simultaneous contact. So what is this simultaneous contact? When a two or three mem team members touch the ball simultaneously. It is counted as two or three hits, with the exception of blocking, right? So when there is going for a block, when that blocking comes, I'll be explaining. Even two blockers or three blockers, even if it touches all the blockers and it'll be considered only as a block. It is not considered as a first hit of the three hits of the team. So here, even what it is saying is simultaneous contacts means, suppose two players are going for uh, to receive the same ball, and then, uh, like for example, one person is uh, hand is this, another uh, another uh, player hand is coming, and both of them are playing simultaneously. The ball hits, 
and then bones. That will be considered as two hits of the three hits. That is one. The second thing is above the net. Above the net, a lot of things happen. Both the, both the team members will be, because both the team have got the right, when the ball is above the top of the net, both the team has got the right to uh, play the ball. So, when the ball is exactly over the top of the net like this, both the players have got the right. At that time, both the team members will be contacting the ball simultaneously. They will be touching the ball. And then what happens? So, if the ball is going outside and is falling out of this side A team, or suppose it is touching and it's falling inside the team B, there are so many options. So, what is the decision to be given by the referee? Here, what happens? Suppose team A and team B, both of them are touching the ball simultaneously and the ball is going out and falling outside the uh, side A, team A. So, then the side will be given, the side will be shown towards the team A side and ball will be shown as out. Earlier, when this first happened, he used to give it a replay. Now, this is not. When the ball is going and falling outside, that will be given as shown as out, showing to team A. Suppose the ball is falling inside team B, inside the court, so ball is in. So, that time will be showing towards the team A and will show ball as in. This is what it is. So, there are certain cases, what happens, both of them simultaneously will be contacting, both of them are the front row players. And they'll be contacting the ball simultaneously, and the ball rolls over the top of the net and touches the antenna. Then immediately you have to blow the whistle and you have to give the replay. The ball, that particular this thing has to be point has to be replayed. Like that. Suppose this side back row player and this side a back row blocker. So here also this back row attacker is actually when before attacking is actually touching the attack line and uh, contacting the ball above the top of the net. And then here, the back row blocker is attempting and he is actually blocking the ball by uh, putting the uh, hand inside uh, before the ball crosses the panel of the net and touches the ball. So that time, again, he has to give replay because both of them are at fault because he is a back row blocker, back row player is coming and blocking. And here is a back row attacker and he's actually uh, uh, touching the attack line and contacting the uh, ball above the top of the net. When that comes, I'll explain. See, here, uh, rules, uh, why they make the rules is, first and foremost, as a player, as a coach, as a referee, what we have to think is, why they make these rules. And for each and everything, there is a reason. Even now, suppose if I ask why the volleyball color is yellow and blue, what for? So, there is a reason to keep that yellow and blue, right? So, this is a question to your people. Why the volleyball color is yellow and blue? What for? Why they make that color? There is a reason. Of course, in some European championship, they use uh, green and uh, um, red. But here, officially, it is yellow and blue. Why? There is a reason for that. If you, can, you can answer in the chat box. But uh, this we have to question. So, why and when? Suppose if you say it is a fault, then why? Suppose if you are telling it is not a fault, again you have to ask why. So if you ask this why for both, then you will, yourself will get the answer for that, for that rule. Okay, when that uh, attack fault comes, I will explain to you how it happens. I will be asking that question to you people so that you will understand better. When that Because that is the main attack fault, netage, other things are main, the main rules which I have to uh, um, cover up. So here, it is a simultaneous call. I'll be sharing this video to you so that you can see what happens here. See, now you saw that both of them are simultaneously contacting. See now, you know, the slow motion. See, now this has to be given to the side B because actually the first step is that side and that has to be given to side B and the ball should be shown as out. So this is for referees like I am telling. So this is what the simultaneous contact, one small video I have shown you so that now we can understand. If you want, I can replay this once again. Uh, I will show you this. Just uh, go through and see this once again, this video.
So this is what. So here you can see the slow motion. Uh, before I go to the next slide, here in the on the net you can see it is uh, there is advertisement like Honda on that. Okay. Usually what happens uh, when I went for the World League uh, because I had an opportunity uh, to represent my country as the first uh, uh, from India to officiate in the senior men world league championship at Korea in 2013. At that time, I learned so many things because that time they introduced this net. Actually, usually it will be 10 by 10. That time it was uh, there was a 5 by 5, the net uh, uh, that uh, strings inside. So there was an advertisement in that. So previous day there was a uh, uh, meeting and uh, the Koreans, they told, we're not supposed to put Honda on that because it is a discretion of the organizer because it is a Honda is a Japanese company. They didn't want their advertisement on this. So that was actually then they had this uh, play net and it was uh, put the play net and the play continued. So this is actually it's an option uh, that uh, now let us think what they have put for the advertisement so that uh, the game um, should um, have more uh, revenue and then so that the game can be promoted uh, uh, worldwide. Because now as uh, FIB is doing the same thing. Ever throughout the uh, world, they are promoting uh, volleyball like anything, like uh, opening a lot of uh, um, FIB um, centers and uh, providing them with all the facilities and promoting the game. That is the reason. So for that, revenue is a must. So now I'll be coming for this uh, rule number nine. This is known as assisted hit because I'll be sharing again a video for this. Next video, I'll be that. What is that assisted hit? Because here I didn't put the photographs, uh, since a little bit of time constraint, didn't put the photographs. This is the uh, first time, I'm, second time I'm doing this webinar, so there was no time for me to put a photograph something behind this back screen. Anyway, so this is assisted hit, rule number uh, 9.1. This all the changes what I'm telling you. See here, what is this assisted means? A player cannot take any support. For example, suppose he is going, uh, and uh, when the ball is going towards the uh, outside the first referee side or uh, outside the antenna and is trying to uh, hold the post and playing the ball. That is not allowed. With the support of the post or with the support of the referee stand or with the support of any other players, he cannot uh, retrieve the ball. So that is considered as a fault. So this is known as assisted because he cannot take any assistant. But uh, there is one more uh, in, in situation where Suppose after the action is over, suppose for the uh, a blocker or an attacker is uh, going for a quick attack, and then what happens? He is losing his balance. After the action, he is losing the balance. He is about to fall in the net. So that time, his team member can assist him and pull him back. That's the point. So suppose now I'm taking the two different uh, this thing here. One is you are taking a support uh, from the player, your team member or from the outsider, or from the post, or the referee stand, and you are retrieving, with the support of that thing, you are retrieving the ball. That is considered as a fault. Now here, after the completion of this uh, uh, action, he is losing his balance and is about to fall on the net, or he is going to fall inside the court. That time, a team member, of his own team member, can pull him back. That is not an assisted hit. That's the point. So this is what it is. Our center line also, he may even suppose sometimes what happens, the players may try to, uh, they may, uh, when they're driving the ball with the diving and uh, their foot is going inside. That time also a team member can pull him inside without disturbing. So then it is not an assisted hit. I'll be showing a video here because a lot of, uh, uh, after this, what happens? This player is a France player. Very good player. He has taken a support, but when retrieving, he is not taking any support. This is allowed. You got the point? I'll just go back once again. Of course, he is taking a support there, but when the actual action is happening, he is not taking any support. This is allowed. This is not an assisted hit. Okay. So now this is the penetration under the net. So this is also, you know, how it happens because I'll be sharing that video. Uh, uh, 
I'll be sharing that video. What happens actually? A player uh, was inside the um, uh, opponent court, and of course, that uh, the foot will be in the air. So, foot will be in the air, and then he comes inside. Earlier, what was the rule was saying on or above? Suppose this is the center line. Even the foot is here. Even if it raises his toes, if it leaves, it will be on on the line. Otherwise, it will be above. On or above was allowed. Here now, what it says the the whole body can go in, except for the foot. If the foot is completely inside, but it is not touching the floor, then it is not a fault. I'll be sharing that video because I don't know. Just give me some time because it's where all that video is. Let me see. So this is actually uh, penetration under the net. I'll be sharing that video very shortly because some uh, little bit of um, up and down has happened. So this actually, I'll be when I share that video again, I'll come back to this. So now I am coming to this uh, 9.2, that is the characteristics of the hit. So you know the ball may touch any part of the body. Earlier, uh, only the hand it was allowed. Now any part. So now usually yesterday, our Dr. Kumara sir was telling, uh, he was showing a lot of videos with uh, small kids playing football. Right? So why? Because even a lot of matches in the World League, World Championship, Olympics, you have seen many players with playing with the foot. Especially I have seen one, a Brazilian player. Okay, so he's playing with the foot, with the first reception also. So with the, that is also play. So if you play football, you'll be having that control. So all games, any game for any player, it's a good. Suppose we used to tell uh, for a volleyball or kabaddi is a very good game. Why? Because there'll be a lot of side movements, forward movement, back movement. All these movements will be there. A lot of movement, sun bending, uh, like at the catching position. Everything is there and diving. Even coco also. Will be, there'll be a lot of dodging movement and then they'll be diving for this. So same thing comes in volleyball. So many games will be having a lot of uh, similarity with that so that if you learn in the basic what they were telling yesterday, so that we can, uh, it'll be useful. So any part of the body is allowed. But only thing, it should not be catch or it should not be thrown. That's what it says, characteristic of the hit. You, you cannot catch the ball. That means you'll show the catch ball or you cannot throw. You know that ball, it is from backside. You cannot throw the ball like this. And it can rebound, it can rebound in any direction. That is not a criteria. Suppose the ball is contracting and the ball is rolling. That is not the criteria. Okay? That is not the criteria. When I come to double contact, I'll tell you. So the sound is not the criteria here. You have to physically see whether if it's a double contact, two different actions. If it 100% two different actions, then it is 100% doubles you have to catch. Otherwise, the ball is rolling. Uh, when they're playing, especially with the overhand finger pass, the ball rolls. But actually, it is allowed. You should not whistle for that. Sound is not the criteria. But at the same time, if it is a double, two different actions, yes, of course, you have to whistle. And then uh, in the first uh, survey seat, they say, of course, the slight catch is allowed. Yes, but it should not be completely catch like in beach volleyball, how they make the overhead pass. That should not be there. If that is there, you have to, in the regular volleyball, you have to whistle for it. So the ball may touch various parts. For example, the ball is rolling like this, very fast. You might have seen suddenly when there is an attack, it may ball roll continuously like this. At the simultaneous contact, so it goes in a one action. So then it is allowed. You have to allow because for the uh, this thing, suppose if you are keep on whistling, then there won't be any thrill in the match. For each and everything, you should not keep whistling. Here, what happens? Because usually the spectators come to see the game. Not the referee. Make sure that first uh, first referees this this thing. They come to see the game or their favorite uh, player playing. So they don't come and watch for the referee. So what we are we are only should be behind the uh, scene and only to uh, see the fair play happens. That's all. So unnecessary whistling should not be there. When and when necessity only we have to visit. So that's what it is. So. So now here I'll be asking one small question to you people because it is there in the rule book. What are the three limitations to play volleyball? The three limitations. You can see um, the rules. You can go through the rule book. So you will know what are the three limitations. So anyway, I'll be sharing because the time is running short. So I'll be sharing this. So that is below by the top of the net. You know the net below the net, that is the antenna. 
on the net below the net only if it crosses the uh, axis of the central line then immediately it has to that is the limitation below by the top of the net and then at the sides by the antenna and the imaginary extension so by this within the antenna that is known as crossing space right so the ball should be played within the crossing space so suppose the ball is attacking from the outside the antenna and is going inside we will consider it as out so the limitations to play is within the imaginary at the sides of the antenna the, within the crossing space and the imaginary extension suppose the ball is going outside the antenna and that ball can be retrieved back through the cross outside the uh, outside the crossing space and then the ball should be cross within the crossing space okay and then the third one is above by the ceiling there is a in the indoor there is a ceiling right there is a limitation for that what is that minimum should be 12.5 meters so these are the three limitations see why because above anybody asks this question as a volleyballer you should be in a position to answer this that's the reason i put this so now i am coming to the ball ball at the net and the player at the net Just give me one second. So what will happen? At the play a player at the net. Now blocking a player may touch the ball beyond the net, provided that he or he does not interfere the opponent play. So this is very important. Now here, what happens? Player at the net. What have, what is happening? Because when the attack hit comes, I'll explain what is attack. Okay. So attack is the definition of attack. You have to know first for this. When the player is at net. Suppose now a server is doing a powerful service. And the first reception, the ball is coming towards the opponent side. Now what is happening? Just imagine the ball is coming like this towards the directed towards the opponent side. Now this blocker is actually the opponent team blocker is trying to block that ball. Okay, and by putting inside. The hand is coming inside, provided actually there should not be that uh, that uh, serving team player should not be any player should not be there for to play that ball. Then only he can block that ball. You got the point. So so he cannot uh, when the uh, opponent when the uh, after service the first three hit should be given to this team. So when the even though the ball is directed towards the opponent. Is above the net. Even this team is has got the right, but the first choice should be given to the receiving team. So when he is in the playing action, you cannot jump and and block the ball. That will be reaching beyond. So when there is no player to play that ball, then of course he has got all the rights to tip the ball. Here also you have to make sure he should not catch and throw the ball like two hands should not throw the ball like this. So this is what it says. Next, I'll be going to the next rule. So penetration under the. This is what I was telling. Uh, the uh, video I'll be sharing now. So you can see this. He's going inside, but his uh, feet uh, feet is not touching the ground. So this is allowed. The letters, as per the letters modified, it is allowed. It is not even though his whole body is going inside. Here, what we have to take care is as a coach or as a player that it should not disturb the opponent's play. As a referee, first we have to see where the ball position is, whether it is in the friend zone and where it is exactly. So when the suppose the ball, the, you can see in this video the blocker is in uh, towards the uh, second referee, that is towards the zone four side, and the ball suppose it is on the zone two of the first referee side. So this blocker cannot move, then it is an interference. So that time he had to blow the whistle for penetration, even though it is not a fault. Okay. I think uh, people understood this. Otherwise, I'll again in some other class again I'll be taking. So contact with the net is also very important here. What is net contact, which is not? So why we can see this our pro volley league, uh, which happened, and uh, you can see yesterday our uh, international player from Karnataka, Mr. Karthik, was there. So I just uh, took his photograph and put there. So here within the antenna, just just see this within the antenna. Okay, between the that is this antenna and this antenna. In between the antenna, any action during playing action, net contact is a fault. 
remember during playing action which all that playing action that includes among that is take off after blocking landing okay or take off just for suppose you know this uh, they say it like a deceiving like the first for uh, first uh, blocker will go for a quick attack and behind him for the vapors another attack comes so even though this uh, first tempo attacker is not uh, uh, touching the net even though the ball is not to him but it is considered as a net fault so this during playing action that was very clearly says it is during playing action among others like take off hit or attempt on landing safely for next for ne that is for next action then it is considered as a so this is what it is outside the antenna so now this is antenna outside the antenna if you, there is a net contact it is not a fault okay it is not a fault outside the antenna i'll show that i'll just show you let me share that video with you so that you can understand outside the antenna any contact with the net it is not a fault even touching a post it is not a fault after that is outside the antenna okay so but at the same time the rule says if it disturbs the play again it is the discretion of the referee where the ball position is suppose if it is in the friend zone and it is near the uh, blocker side then there is a little disturbance the net then that should be considered as a net fault otherwise the ball is back zone or the near the free zone then it is allowed that is, the net contact should not be visible for it okay got understood so that's what it is so i'll be sharing this video now so suppose there is one more video like the net contact what happens after the service the ball is driven towards the net in between the net like this it is hitting the net in between so one blocker actually if he's now you can see number 14 here with the hand like this okay or even number 9 so if the ball is coming directly and touching and this number 14 or number 9 is not just standing there and the ball touches their hand and falls then it is not a fault it should not be intentional suppose number i'll share that video if suppose number 14 or number 9 is standing like this and the ball is coming and the little bit of action they just push the hand like this so then it is intentional for that it has to be uh, called as a fault and even the referee has got even right for to penalize the player so this has to be taken care by the uh, coaches and the players So here also this is what i told uh, it happened in uh, one of the major championship see here actually they are going for a challenge here actually you know this now latest uh, uh, from almost this uh, more than 7 years now they introduced this challenging system i'll come to that last uh, session i'm lost uh, this thing uh, rule about that how when what all the challenges how many challenges are eligible by team and for what all things they can challenge so that is a video for video for that also for which ball in ball out anything which all they can ask and which they cannot ask that i'll be sharing that uh, screen to you of course the last so here actually it's is touching outside the sorry the player is clearly showing it is outside the antenna and they'll go for a challenging system for this and then the the decision will be reversed so you can see this there is a challenge challenge here you can see there is a challenge that is actually sign board it says challenge so that uh, the spectators can know there is a challenge our coaches ask for a challenge 
and you can see the uh, video also in the camera there. So and everywhere now there is a system for that where the coach can immediately has to press the tab and ask for that uh, uh, challenge system. Here the official uh, review is going on. When the second referee is go there along with the reserve referee and they'll immediately say and then the instructions will be given and then as per that thing, the uh, first referee will take a call on that. So here also, during the playing action, I told, only during playing action. So here, uh, this especially this player, you can see when she is receiving the ball, of course, she is not seeing the net, but of course, she is receiving the ball, they said, but her foot touches the net and it is considered as a fault. You can see that. This is actually, it is a playing action, so it is considered as a fault. Maybe we don't know for next time onwards, uh, maybe they may change this rule, we don't know. So here you can see only the player is only in acting, action, because he's not anywhere touching the ball, but still it is considered as a fault. You see number 15. So you got it right. So even though his actually oh, intention was to clear the ball, but uh, since that other player was there, he didn't see, and he contacted the net, and it was blown immediately by the second ref. So here is there is one more. This is very see it has happened in uh, Rio Olympics 2016 recently, the last Olympics. Sorry. Here what has happened? If you see the if you watch this video, you'll feel as if the blocker has touched the net. So the, actually, it is attacker is actually it, it is not a, it is not, not taking an unfair advantage. It is not intentionally done. But uh, just watch this video. You got it. So immediately he's along with the action, he's taking the blocker's hand with him. You can clearly see here. See? After attack it, he's taking along with that. See, a few incidents do happen. They try to uh, take advantage. Uh, by actually by behind putting the hand behind and uh, pulling the net, other things, many things happen. This actually should be penalized. Usually, he can even be disqualified. That is not a fair play. Okay, now this uh, uh, you can see what I said about uh, the number 14 uh, when the blocker is should hold the hand like this, uh, the, when the ball is driven through the net. So, here you can see this player intentionally uh, trying to. See, that is intentionally. This uh, player number, uh, this number 10, intentionally he is moving towards the ball and intentionally is putting his hand as if he is not doing anything, but still it is a intentional. And you can see the replay again. That is a slow motion, you can see that. Uh, now I'll be coming to the service. So this is one action which actually uh, requires attention here. So this service, you know what is service. It is a service action where to put uh, the ball into play by the right, uh, right player in service zone. So actually there is a, uh, earlier there was a 7 meters free zone. Now it is 6.5 meters only. 
So here I'll be showing that uh, video. Just see whether this is allowed or not. See here, did you observe what happened? The referee had actually authorized, correct? But uh, the server tossed the ball. What the server if it says one toss or one release? But here, what has happened? The, but in the case book, it says it is allowed because it is again the discretion of the referee. What he has to do is once the server takes the ball and turns towards the, uh, I mean, the serving this thing, uh, the opponent immediately has to blow the whistle. Usually, they take six seconds. They get six seconds usually. Uh, for the next uh, serving. But here what has happened, suppose the player is going very slow. After authorizing, he can call that player and he can caution for the delay. Or he can be sanctioned as a delay. So if it is intentionally. So here, actually, before the uh, server turns, the referee is authorized and he has tossed the ball. With a good intention, it was allowed. And uh, even the rule says it is uh, it, it can be allowed. So now there is another action. The ball should be hit with one hand or any part of the arm. That means this is the whole arm. Okay. Only with this palm or one hand only. With this up to here you can. Even on drum service you can do. With the open hand you can do even jump service. With one hand you can do the executor service. Dribbling or anything after a visual also you can dribble. That is allowed. But here you can see this. Watch this uh, Qatar player what he is doing. So what he has done is he has used both hands. Like upper over and finger pass, he has because he couldn't take uh, take off properly out of balance. So just to put the ball inside, he has used his both hands. So this is they called as a fault. Because the rules clearly says with the, the ball there should be hit with one hand or any part of the arm after being tossed or released from the hands. Okay, that is uh, rule number 12.4.1. So this now will be coming to attack it. So there is a definition, uh, a fantastic jump, right? A very good action. So what is the definition for attack it? All actions which direct the ball towards the opponent with the exception of service and blocker considered as attack it. That's the definition. So any, all actions, all actions means like not only is now what uh, the photograph says is jumping and attacking, no. Any directed ball, even from the upper end, even from the under end, or even from the attack, it is considered as attack. Any directed ball towards the opponent is attack. So that doesn't mean that only he has to jump and attack. Okay? Next, this thing. And tipping is permitted. Okay? It should be a clean hit. It should not be a caught or thrown, I told you, no? Last, uh, uh, I told you, like, it should not be caught or thrown. It should be a clean. Tipping is allowed from the fingertips. It is allowed. You can do this, this, no issues. So, an attack hit is completed when the moment the ball is completely crosses the... See, this is very, very important what I am telling is this rule number 13.1.3, please. Make uh, all the coaches and players make sure because an attack hit, when it is completed, that is very, very important. I will tell you why. Because I was uh, tell you, I told you, you know, last time, you should ask when, if it is a fault, why? If it is not a fault, why? So it says an attack is completed at the moment the ball completely crosses the vertical panel of the net or touched by an opponent blocker. So what it means, for example, uh, if I say, if I ask you a question, a back row player, what he is doing? Uh, he is touching the attack line and he is take off and then he is contacting the ball above the top of the net and he is executing the attack. So now, is it a fault or not? So many people say it is fault. And the rest of them will say it is not a fault. So for both of them, I will be asking why. Why it is a fault? So let me explain why it is not a fault. When it should be whistled, especially a referee, when he will be whistling. Of course, the teams, opponent team, the coaches will be shouting, uh, back row player, back row player. But the referee knows when to whistle because the rule clearly says what? 
So for, for that, an example is, suppose an uh, opponent uh, team is a setter. Usually, the setters will be more intelligent. So here, in the op this side, the setter will be in zone 2, for example. That's, this side setter is in zone 2. And there, the setter is going for service. So what he does is, he serves the ball to the zone 2. So that the first uh, uh, hit will be taken by the uh, setter. So that there will be a disturbance. So there won't be any combination of attacks. So that uh, he does the service to the zone 2, where the setter is. This says setter is also more intelligent. What he does is, the first second pass goes to the back row player. He makes a pass to the back row player. You got the point. Now, this is the service. And the first hit is taken by the setter. He is making pass to the back row player. Now, this is the second hit, right? So, now what is happening? This attacker is touching the attack line. You got the point? Now, which is the ball? This is the second hit. So, he is touching the line, taking off, contacting the above the top of the net. He is attacking the ball. Now, what is happening? This ball goes and hit the tape tape of the net and it is coming back to the same side and the third it can be cleared, correct? It's allowed, right? So that is the reason it clearly says the ball should completely, this is the net, the ball should completely cross the over the panel of the net or the blocker, opponent blocker should, can reach, overreach and test the ball means immediately you have to visit and you have to show as a back row player, you can show like this. It's a back row uh, player a fault. So this is what it is. That's why the rule clearly says the ball should completely cross the vertical panel of the net. So now you you know why uh, the referee will not whistle. Immediately he'll be waiting for the ball to completely cross or the blocker touches the ball. The same thing applies when the Libro makes a overhand pass out. Even though the attacker is reaching beyond the top of the net, and it is hitting the tape, the third ball can be cleared, that is allowed. Same thing here also. So, this is very, very important. So, the faults of attack hit, already I told you what happened now. Like uh, the attack hit is taking from the back row and what is what. So, now I'll be coming to the block. So, what is the again definition of blocking? Blocking is the action of players close, that is the players who are close, standing close to the net to intercept the ball coming from the opponent by reaching higher than the top. See, very, very important. By reaching higher than the top of the net. This is the net. Even a small higher than the top of the net, it is considered as a block. Because regardless of height, so some players will be very tall. Even when standing, their hand will be above the top of the net. So that is also, if the ball touches, that is considered as a block. Not as a first. And it should be, and the, uh, the particular player should be Standing close to the net. Okay, that is that again the referees. They will decide whether it's close or it is standing uh, one meter uh, uh, above the net. I mean, uh, 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 what is that? The distance from the net. So that has to be decided by the referee, first referee or the second referee. That will be decided by the referees. So this, the what block uh, rule says, it is the player should uh, standing close to the net to intercept the ball by reaching by the higher than top of the net, right? So reaching higher than the top of the net. So only front row players are permitted to complete a block. Okay. So this again, as I told you, like you can see this action, it's a fantastic action with three blockers. And now if the ball touches all the six hands, it is considered as only block. It is not considered as three hits. So even, suppose there is one more video that has been changed now. What is happening here is, even it may touch, not only that doesn't mean that it only to touch the palm, it can touch any part of the body. So it is considered as a block. Even if it touches the head, it touches the even the foot, it is considered as a block. Blocking the, with the opponent's face, that's what I told you, you know, if it is beyond and the provided action does not interfere with the opponent's play. Right, I told you, when suppose the opponent team is coming to retrieve the ball and then you are reaching beyond and uh, putting your hand inside the net and blocking. So that is considered as a reaching beyond. Immediately has to visit and show beyond. It happened in the 64th Nationals, final match between Kerala and Railways. Last moment, even the setter was coming with the overhand finger pass and uh, our uh, Jerome overreached, I think not Jerome, some other player reached beyond and touched the ball. Referee was correct in calling as a overreach. 
and the match ended. So usually uh, the rule says always the match should end naturally, not by default. Should end naturally. So that's what uh, it is uh, just out of this thing I'm telling you. So you can see here uh, some actions of the block. Ah, this is uh, something new, right? So now here, actually, uh, the second referee blew the uh, first referee showing as a uh, touch out. But the, you can see the player showing her ponytail. Y you can see her, she is showing the ponytail. The ball actually touched her ponytail and gone. But as per the rules, it says any part, right? If it is higher than the top of the net, any part of the body is considered as a touch, a block. So here this change the rules now here in this. You can see in the slow motion. I can see that right? Slow motion in challenge actually. Actually it was upheld because at that time the rule clearly says that if they are reaching above the top of the net and then any part of the body it touches are considered as a, a, a touch. So now the latest next rules. See an attacker, this actually I was telling. This decision was correct. So the, this is uh, actually uh, latest uh, rule books, I mean case book says no. The net touch by here is not considered as a fault unless this net touch has influence on the game. Not the point. Influence means, suppose if it is stretching like I told you, no, should not influence. Keeping consistency to this approach, the touch by the blocker head is not counted as a touch. The rally would have to be won by the defending team because the ball has went outside. So the defending team has got the, should be, the point should be won by the, the team. There's the new uh, case book. They have done this because after this, any rules changes happens after the Olympics. Now, because of this COVID, this uh, Olympic has been postponed to next year. So next year, this, all these rules, whatever things have happened, will be uh, implemented in the book, the rule book, new book. Already this has been introduced, but still the print media comes in the after Olympic. Usually any rules after changes, it will be coming like that. So, uh, Dr. Manjana, can I continue? Because there are another lot of things are there. Is it okay? Uh, Piyush, Piyush, Hello. 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 Yes. Hello. Can I continue, Manav? Because uh, there is some more, uh, some more time is required for this. Is it okay? Uh, madam, just to interrupt, Srikanth here. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of uh, Physical Education Foundation of India, Karnataka chapter, uh, we wholeheartedly welcome Dr. Piyush Jain sir, Secretary, uh, Physical Education Foundation of India. Kindly uh, speak a few words with regarding to the event and uh, with regarding to PEFI. Over to you, Dr. Piyush Jain, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, first of all, I think uh, I should not interrupt uh, Sri M.S. Balaji Prabhuji uh, because uh, every time uh, administrator in interrupt the uh, speaker. So I think it's not a right time. Everybody wants to listen our uh, former international uh, volleyball player and international referee, uh, MS Balaji Prabhuji, in this uh, wonderful uh, faculty development program. Basically, uh, we all know that uh, we are facing the corona problem everywhere in uh, the world. And it's a right time to upgrade our knowledge. Uh, I think it's a, for the physical education teacher, uh, for the coaches, for the uh, professionals, uh, PE professionals. It's a right time that we have to upgrade our knowledge by uh, taking this, uh, attending this type of faculty development program uh, running everywhere. And I congratulate uh, Mr. Ravi Kumar, organizing secretary, and our team uh, leader uh, in Karnataka, uh, Dr. Srikant Ji for organizing the our concept. My, my concept was the, uh, that we have to specific uh, webinars on some specific games. 
so we planned this webinar uh, to all the participants uh, regarding the volleyball game kabaddi and other games so again i congratulate prathi karnataka for organizing this webinar and uh, i think uh, we should learn from ms balaji prabhu ji that i am listening uh, you from since last one and half hour and it's a wonderful knowledge and my best wishes to mahani cluster university bangalore and department is also doing a good thing it's a seven days uh, our webinar so once again i congratulate to all the participants all the faculty those who are uh, coming to present sports training coaching and design changes in rules and regulation in different different games so we are covered cover here the four games kabaddi basketball judo and volleyball and after completing this webinar i again request to the karnataka faculty uh, faculty to organize such type of program as we all knows that pafi is now a recognized uh, body from the government of india ministry of youth affairs and sports so it is high time for all the physical education teacher to attach this organization and come under one umbrella of pafi for the further development of physical education in sports in country government believe us government believe that pafi will make some changes uh, in my point of view physical education teacher having a loss of potential we all should work together all the physical education teacher must uh, enhance their knowledge and this knowledge may be given uh, this knowledge can be given to the youngest of players so that they can also be benefited from this i think from uh, 21st september all the uh, packet, uh, this training areas the sports ground will open and uh, from last 3 4 months pepsi karnataka organizing such type of program uh, with a variety of uh, program so once again i congratulate and sorry to interrupt you that uh, i i interrupt uh, balaji prabhu sir lecture and no issue sir to the uh, organizer to continue this uh, lecture and uh, i am also listening thank you once again thank you for inviting me namaste thank you sir for a uh, very good input thank you thank you very much dr piyush jain sir and uh, on behalf of pefi karnataka and uh, maharani cluster university we all attend thank you for uh, coming down for this program and uh, i request rani sandeep madam to kindly take over and continue thank you mr shikar i request uh, mr ms balaji prabhu okay please yes, sir yeah one second okay Uh, thank you once again. Uh, actually, it is very much in, uh, required because uh, all the physical education teachers and then the coaches and the players, uh, because this is a good uh, good platform. Just uh, uh, I'm getting an opportunity to share a little bit of knowledge what I've learned, and it's a great experience. Uh, the two on online, what you are doing. Obliged. So, Obliged. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. So now uh, let me continue because uh, now substitution and exception substitution is very very important because all rules are very important but still the latest changes and uh, exception substitutions what is exception substitution how it can be done uh, how the liberal replacement can be done all these things I'll be explaining in a uh, very uh, uh, not in a brief but a little bit uh, so that you people can understand the substitution and exception substitution. So you know the substitution what is substitution right? So there is now because earlier uh, the coaches used to show the action, uh, the substitution action. All these things has been removed. There's a substitution zone. Once the substitution player enters, immediately the scorer will press the buzzer to so authorize the substitution. Now, as per the this thing, letters, the gadgets or the electronic gadgets, where the coaches will be actually in advance, they'll be uh, the gadget. They'll be uh, asking for the substitution. So uh, based on that, uh, immediately because all the electronic score sheets. So that will be uh, taken care by the scorer. Score Suppose if it is not there, even the, the electronic gadget is not working, or if it is not there, the, once the players enter the substitution zone, immediately it is the duty of the scorer to press the buzzer. And that's what I say. You know, usually, the team uh, it is a teamwork. Even the assistant scorer can scorer can assist the scorer by uh, assisting him by pressing the buzzer or whatever it is he can because it is a team. All it is a team. Well, like we say. In my company, I say teamwork. Team wins, so it is a teamwork. All the team, if all like all the officials, all the team members, play correctly, 
and uh, I mean, uh, I mean I'm, I'm talking about the official side. So that it will win. So that match will be a perfect one. So the uh, spectators will enjoy, the players will enjoy, they'll give their full potential. So if there is no team, well, definitely a lot of disturbances will be there, a lot of uh, controversy will be there. That has to be avoided. So it is only helping our colleague, right? Today I'll be the second referee, second tomorrow I'll be the first referee, and vice versa. So this has to be, it's a team. Always we should work like a team, because it's a team game, obviously. So any game to matter, always, without the teamwork, nothing happens. So here this is. Now I am coming to, uh, especially because I don't want to go for this imp improper request, other things, because it's a huge subject, again, it takes a lot of time. So I'll go for exceptional substitution. What can be done, how it can be done. So exceptional substitution, what is the meaning? For example, uh, just imagine number four is uh, inside. And uh, number 10 is substituting number 4. Got the point? For example, number 4 is in playing 6. And number 10 is out there. Now the 10 is replacing, uh, substituting whom? Number 4. Num number 4 is where? Is on the team bench or in the warm-up area. So now who is inside? Number 10. So after one or two rotations, the coach opt for another substitution. Again, number 4 is coming inside. And then number 10 is going out. Now, the substitution is over. Two substitution per player is over, right? Now, the substitution is not there. Now, what happens? Now, who is inside? Number four. Now, this number four is getting injured. He'll injure ankle twist or knees, uh, this thing. Some injury happens or head injury. Immediately, the play will be stopped. As per the uh, uh, this thing, we have to stop the uh, rally immediately because players' concern is very important. Not okay after the next thing comes, but immediately the game has to be stopped, and that point will be replayed. But the injury, once it happens, so now the second referee goes and inspects. This is the second duty of the second referee. Second referee sees whether the particular uh, player is uh, what is the I mean. Uh, uh, seriousness of the injury, and it re requires he'll be calling the uh, doctor. So doctor, once the doctor certifies, yes, this player cannot continue to play further or take part in the further matches, the further game. So then, usually, the referee will give three minutes time. Otherwise, the coach can go for an exceptional substitution. He can again put back number 10 inside, even though the substitution is over. Again, number 10 can go and replace, I mean, the substitute number 4. This is exceptional. That can be taken. Got the point now? How it can be done exceptional? You remember, number 4 is inside. Number 10 has gone in substituted number 4. Number 4 is sitting outside. Again, after some two rallies, number 4 is substituting number 10. Now, number 10 is outside, 10 is outside. The substitution is over. Number 4 is getting injured. So no further substitution, legal substitution cannot happen. So obviously the coach will go for exceptional. So here there is a catch, very, very important catch here. Here, now that exceptional, I told you how it can be done. Of course, number 10 can go in and change, and I mean, substitute. Now the coach doesn't want number 10. For example, the coach doesn't want number 10 to substitute them because they injured number 4. He wants some other player. It clearly says, other than the first six players, suppose what has happened, for example, a Libro is actually replacing a back row player. For example, Libro is replacing number eight. And number eight is actually sitting on the bench. Got the point? Now, remember, Libro has replaced the back row player, number eight. Number eight is sitting outside. The match is going in a tension. Lot of rallies, lot of points continuously. It is in fourth set, point to point equal, 20 all, 21 all, 22 all. It's going equal. So the, the coach is on tension. And uh, sometimes even the assistant coach even tell me, they may not listen because you know the tension, how it happens. The coach will be taking because the coach's intention is to win. Now, in that uh, moment, what happens? The coach will say, number eight to go inside. Who? Oh, imagine number eight is telling, the coach is telling, number eight, go on, the, uh, substitute number four because he's injured. Now what happens? Is it allowed? Of course, it is allowed. The scorer will not say, no, it is not allowed. 
is allowed. Now the eight is going inside, but actually, what was eight? Actually, he has replaced who? The libro. Libro is replaced. Number eight. Eight is sitting outside now. But what this coach is doing? He is actually exceptional substitution. He is putting number eight inside, and four is out now. Exceptional. So now what happens? At this juncture, the libro coming to zone five. From zone five to he has to go to zone four. Now who has to replace number eight? But eight is where he is inside. So there is no replacement player for the libro. So libro cannot go in uh, the front row, right? So now what happens? So this. At but this particular set, the team will become incomplete. What's the point? At this juncture, the team will become incomplete, and then the that set will be over, and the points remain same. Suppose if it is 25, 23, it remains same, and then the next set the change change happens. Suppose if it is not there, so then the team will be incomplete, and the match will get over. What's the point? Okay. Yeah. Last five minutes, sir. Five minutes. Uh, okay, I have to cover so many things. Okay, just yes. give me uh, one second. Okay. Um, okay, this is exceptional substitution. Now you understood. And I will be going very fast. Now I'm very sorry. Um, that's what I told. I'll be. Suppose anybody wants to, uh, this thing, please uh, do. Uh, if if uh, our, uh, this our cluster university uh, give permission, I can share my number to you. You can face any questions any time. I'm your welcome. So that. Um, I'll be uh, more glad to share the uh, rules to you. Okay, one second. Eh? Uh, so this actually that's what I told. Injury means immediately uh, it has to be done, and there is improper uh, request. So I'll be coming to this uh, libro system. Uh, okay, uh, external interference actually that has to be replayed because when they're playing. Inside the playing area, there should not be any interference. Like here, what happened? The, the camera person is actually with that uh, trolley is coming inside, and then that the ball touches the camera. Immediately, that has to be replayed. That has to be stopped, and because it's a fair play, right? Got to give them chance. So that's what it is. So here, I'll go a little faster because I'll avoid all these things. Mm. Okay, one second. So actually, to be very honest, because I I cannot uh, go uh, just like that. So I have to keep on explaining so that each and every uh, this thing they should understand. Okay, that is the intention. Just I'll be going. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, are you on the line? Hello. Hello. Sir, Balaji, sir. Yes, sir. You can speak, sir. Sir, uh, I have a one uh, inquiry in the chat box. Only uh, one minute, you must please be complete. The difference between the position and the uh, zones. I think he's not there on the line, sir. Uh, sir, Balaji Prabhu, sir. Hello. Hello. Full uh, session. We have uh, guided a lot of information regarding the rules of volleyball from a person who has the a credit of. For uh, being a one, uh, only one from Karnataka to be the international referee. So in this section, I thank you, sir, for a enlightening the uh, physical education fraternity with your wisdom. We have explained in the detail with appropriate uh, clippings and best slides. I am surely all the participants have enjoyed this session, sir. I thank you, Maharani's Cluster University, and. Uh, Pefe for organizing this event. So on this, on behalf of, I thank you, Mr. Balaji Prabhu sir. Thank you, thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Manjula, for being the moderator of this session.
I thank Mr. Balaji also for being the resource person. Finally, I would call upon Mr. Srikant to propose the vote of thanks. Mr. Srikant. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, being part of this uh, one-week FDP on major games like volleyball, basketball, kabaddi, and uh, judo. Uh, this is high time. Maharani Cluster University is organizing such an event. And uh, uh, it was planned in accordance with the uh, PEFI India chapter. And uh, the response for this uh, webinar was overwhelming. And we had almost around uh, 3,000 uh, uh, 40 participants who had registered for the event. And uh, yesterday and today, we had wonderful sessions with regarding to volleyball coaching and uh, rules and regulations. And uh, on behalf of Pefi Karnataka and uh, Maharani Cluster University, first of all, I would like to wholeheartedly thank uh, Balaji Prabhu sir. Amidst uh, not keeping well, sir has turned up uh, today and uh, has given a wide uh, uh, inputs regarding officiating in volleyball. And uh, definitely we will uh, be making use of SIR's resources in future along with Pefi Karnataka. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. On behalf of everyone, once again, I thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And I would like to thank uh, my uh, beloved friend, Dr. Manjana, uh, Physical Education Director, Government First Grade College, Ramnagar, for being the moderator for session for the session. Manjana, who has been following volleyball for uh, a few decades with many of his compatriots has uh, wonderfully moderated the session today. Thank you, Manjana sir. Thank you very much. And I would like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Ravi Kumar, the organizing secretary, uh, for uh, uh, wonderfully uh, tying up with uh, all sportsmen and uh, various uh, uh, organizations uh, to make this event a successful one. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi, uh, Ravi Kumar sir. I would like to thank uh, the guest of honor for the day, uh, and who's an international volleyball player, Vinaya Joseph, who, was, uh, who spoke well and uh, who was inspiring for the uh, young uh, talents of volleyball. Thank you, thank you very much, madam. And uh, on behalf of uh, Pifi Karnataka, I would like to thank the entire technical team, Dr. Mundraj, Jaivin, and Srinivas, who are behind the screen working for the success of the event. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. And uh, I would like to thank the Special Officer of uh, Maharani Cluster University, Dr. M.S. Reddy, sir, who has accorded permission uh, and uh, was uh, inspirational in conducting the event. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And I'd like to thank the Physical Education Directors of uh, Maharani Cluster University uh, under various colleges, uh, Dr. Shant Kumari, Dr. Jagdish, and uh, uh, other Physical Education Directors, including Geeta and others. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, I would like to thank <coughs> Rani Sandhu, madam, uh, for uh, being the uh, host for uh, yesterday and today, and uh, will be continuing for another five days. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. And uh, least but not the last, but I would like to thank all the participants uh, who had registered for the event. And uh, yesterday, due to some technical uh, hindrance, uh, we had to just uh, uh, send you the live session which was recorded and which is available on YouTube. So we request all the participants to kindly watch it and uh, comment it on the YouTube uh, chat box. So from there, we will be taking the comments. And uh, we will be sending the uh, feedback links uh, tomorrow, uh, during the tomorrow session. So kindly uh, request all the participants to kindly stay tuned. And uh, we, post, we request all the participants to kindly comment on the YouTube channel and the YouTube link, uh, sorry, uh, the feedback link will be sent uh, to everyone tomorrow. And uh, thank you for your patience listening. And uh, tomorrow we are uh, getting up with an, another new game that is basketball and will be followed by judo and uh, kabaddi. So the event is uh, kicking off well and uh, a lot of uh, newcomers are moving in and uh, we have closed the registration. And uh, with all the technicalities and all the other uh, uh, inputs regarding the game and uh, uh, feedback link and certification will be informed uh, later on during the sessions. And uh, from Pefi Karnataka, I take leave by telling that all those who are interested to organize any event under the Pefi banner can contact us by uh, mailing to us, which is already circulated on the poster. Uh, it is Pefi Karnataka chapter at gmail.com. So we'd be honored to organize your events. And uh, Pefi Karnataka is coming up with two webinars next week. 
one is on 15th and one is on 20th uh, we will be releasing the registration process and the posters uh, by tomorrow so on behalf of pefi i thank once again one and all for being part of this event for the day and uh, meet you all tomorrow exactly at 6 o'clock thank you thank you very much